Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time for another episode of Better Call Saul. This is going to be episode two from season two. And in this episode, I am looking forward to potentially seeing what's going to happen to the tech guy, the IT guy that works for the pharmaceutical company, the one that, that had hired Mike, and Mike was basically protecting, and then he decided he didn't need Mike. He could do it on his own. And then, of course, Nacho got into his brand new vehicle, this tech guy's brand new vehicle, looked at the registration, saw the address, and, of course, we know Nacho. He decided he's going to go rip him off, and that's what he did. And then this guy, this tech guy, called the police, and the police, of course, are now kind of onto his trail. So I'm looking forward to, hopefully, seeing the outcome of that. I know that's just a little side story that, that in the grand scheme of things, I don't believe is going to to play into the series as a whole. But it's one of those little little nuggets that you get into that you really enjoy and you want to see how it's going to play out. And that's that's what I'm hoping we're going to see how that's going to play out. And then, of course, we have Jimmy starting his new career at this new law firm. And I'm wondering if that switch on the wall that says do not turn it off and he turned it off. Is that going to be anything, or was that just kind of showing a little bit of his rebellious side and a little bit, little piece of character development, just kind of showing him to be who we believe he's going to become or who we know he's going to become down the road being Saul. But where is this going to lead, this whole thing with this new law firm? So I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out, if that's even going to play a part in this upcoming episode. And, of course, the relationship with Chuck, I would expect that to, to advance, that storyline to advance as well. And just so many different moving parts here to, to get to where we know we're going. So, like I say, this is Episode 2 of Season 2. Now, if you're interested in watching any of my full-length reactions, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash 31mike. And I'll post a link to that down below in the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and jump into episode two of season two of Better Call Saul. I wonder if that's really him playing, if, if this actor, I don't know his name, can't think of his name. If he actually plays the piano in real life. Howard. Morning. Delivery for McGill. What are you doing? <laughs> have Howard doing the deliveries. It's been a while. Thought I should come in and check in on you. Did I hear music? Hmm? No, no. I'll just get that for you. I'm thinking of maybe coming in for an hour or two next week. Well, uh, if you feel comfortable. I mean, we certainly would love to have you. We will take anything we can get. Anything on track with the sandpiper? Of course, he's no Jimmy. Move it along. Davis and Maine are uh, really pulling their weight. Is he going to tell him that Jimmy's working for him now? It's definitely not a two-man job, that's for sure. Hmm. Anyone uh, heard from Jimmy? I have, yes. <laughs> I've talked to him. How is he? Speaking of which, <laughs> I have he's some He's going to tell him here. He's working at Davis and Maine. Doing what? He's in the mailroom. Working as an attorney. Clifford Maine hired Jimmy. Mm -hmm. He's giving Jimmy a chance. He had his own people doing client outreach, but every time they would talk to a Sandpiper resident, Jimmy's name would come up. <laughs> of course. <sighs> Those old folks, they just say they love him. Yeah, they do. Jimmy certainly has a way with people. He does. Hmm. Seems like Howard's getting around here They're on Jimmy's aware side. Of his background at Davis and Maine, his education. In the spirit of full disclosure, Cliff did talk to me beforehand. Truth be told, Kim Wexler pushed for this. Hard. Partner track? Yeah. Hmm. It's great. Hmm. Something tells me he doesn't think it's great. Yeah, I don't know. Howard seemed a little perturbed or a little like like he was letting chuck know maybe they should have done that 
I don't know. That's just the way it seemed. And, of course, Chuck isn't real receptive to this whole thing, even though he's playing it out like he is. Now, now he's really going to mess up on the piano. He was messing up a little bit. Now he's not going to be able to concentrate and play. Oh, we should get one of those smokers. We could just barbecue we, for days. She's making yeah. plans here. We should get one of those smokers. Definitely. Gotta get a smoker. <laughs> he picked up on that. Yep, oh, checking in on Mike. I'm really glad they're doing a lot with Mike in this series so far. Because I really did like his character in Breaking Bad. Hmm. Is this Jimmy? Oh. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so, is this the parking lot for the police station? What are you pulling around over there? We'll have a little talk. <laughs> He's gonna have to put this guy straight that he doesn't know him. Why are you here? I have business with the police. And what business might that be? Somebody broke into my house and stole my property. Your drugs. Well, yeah, but obviously I didn't tell the cops that. I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Your baseball cards. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that you have to tell you this. But it's probably a bad idea that you willingly talk to the police, being a criminal and all. I'm not here <laughs> as a criminal. I'm here as a crime victim. And I was very careful when I talked to them. I mean, they have no idea about my other business. <laughs> they have an idea. Let me explain it to you. They've invited you on a fishing trip. What's that? A fishing trip. Those cops have no interest in helping you get your cards back. You're obviously under suspicion. I disagree. This guy's a fool. For debate, you go home now. What about my baseball cards? Cost of doing business. No. No, no, no. <laughs> this guy's I'm an idiot. I'm getting those back. I will take the risk. No, you won't. Because then you'll be putting my well-being at risk. I'm getting them back. Is Mike going to be able to help him with that? I'll find your cards. Yep. Kind of thought that would come up. Okay, then. Jesus. <laughs> They're going to give us little snippets of this idiot's case, of his, of his story. Hola. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Welcome. He's looking for Nacho. <laughs> um, I was hoping to get an estimate. That me car, me coche. You do cars? See, <laughs> cars. Todo el tiempo. Ah, well, you know, I, I was hoping to get my seats reupholstered. Ignacio, mijo. Sí, papá. Ignacio. That's Nacho. And Mike knew it was Nacho. Sí, 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 sí. Of course, Mike investigated him, so Mike knew he was there. Now they get down to the real business. How'd you find me? <laughs> Why are you here? Baseball cards. The way I figure, you saw that midlife crisis of a vehicle and wisely decided to cut ties with the man, and I don't blame you. I did too. And then you ripped him off. <laughs> well, then you underestimated how attached the man was to those cards, so attached. He called the police and reported them stolen. Now they're nosing around. That sounds like a you problem. No, I think it's very much an us problem. Yeah, I guess I'll just have to take my chances, but good luck to you. But I think what we have here now is a carrot and stick situation. 
this a stick? Hmm? You Nacho doesn't know who him? he's dealing with. Because you're gonna need a bigger stick, old man. I'm not here to threaten your family. And the name of the stick is Tuco Salamanca. <laughs> That's a pretty big stick. Go finds out about your little side business. <laughs> big enough stick. Nacho is not happy. You give me back the baseball cards, ten thousand in cash, and you net roughly, roughly sixty thousand. <laughs> no, exactly. Does that work? Well, how does that work? What's he gonna do to get him sixty thousand dollars? She's a little. Tricky around the corners. I want to make sure the boys at the chop shop are real gentle. <laughs> so that's how he's going to get to 60,000. Wait, why? No. You think I'd be caught dead driving that thing? It looks like a school bus for six year old pimps. All right. He wants to check. Aaron. Hmm. Okay, there's Jeter. Hmm. Not necessarily the best way to be storing those. Not that I'm a card expert. Looks like everyone's here. Hmm. And now the other item. Hmm. That 10,000 was for Mike. <laughs> Guess it's a good thing the cops weren't following this guy. You know, I can't help thinking an apology was in order. <laughs> uh, it's... It's the police again. <laughs> I'm so sorry to interrupt. Oh, this one lady, um, she's sweet, but uh, deaf as a doornail. She keeps all of her paperwork in, um, she keeps it. I'm sorry, excuse me, Jimmy. Hmm. I'm going to need everybody's oh, key files. Oh, okay, Chuck's here. A moment Jimmy's probably been dreading. Yeah. He he hasn't been looking forward to this. Remind me. Hey, everybody. Jimmy, where were we? Uh, yeah. Hmm. He's going to be so flustered now. Um, yeah. So he's flustered now that Chuck's in the room. Uh, getting uh, documents from some of the clients... We definitely have some pack rats. God bless them. Hmm. I was visiting Mrs. Goose. She just gave him the grounding he needed. Our clients will always be our best resource. Plus, they have ribbon candy. <laughs> what are you doing here? My name is on the building. So great to have you here. If you need anything, I'll be in my office. Hmm. Jimmy ought to turn and walk away now, too. Why are you here? <laughs> James McGill. It's Ermin Trout. You're still morally flexible. <laughs> morally flexible. So I like that. Have a job for you. Oh. Where and when? <laughs> He's still morally flexible. Take a seat. Oh, this guy with the Mr. cops. Momo, thank you for coming in and talking to us. Yeah, of course. Look at us, four friends. We just want to find the guys who took your baseball cards. You know, my uncle, the Thai cop tobacco card, kept that thing behind six inches of Like it was the Mona Lisa or something. Wow, Thai cop. I know that one's expensive. 
finished for you. It's done. Case closed. Now, is this guy going to say something he shouldn't I say just, to keep some going? Much, you know, you guys have on your hands, like murderers and robbers and gangs and hey, stuff. Danny, I, why don't you get some air? You can have some coffee. I'll finish up with the detectives here. In other words, he's got a big mouth. He needs to leave the room. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks here, guys. I'm guessing here. Two fine uniformed officers found Mr. Worm. Who among us is without sin? But those sins aren't all of the criminal variety, and neither are Mr. Wormald's. They are, however, very private. You know, as much as we'd love to um, take your word for it, we're going to need a little more than that. It's between uh, Mr. Wormald and uh, his art patron. Uh, my client has an arrangement with a wealthy gentleman for whom <clears throat> Mr. Wormald provides art in exchange for this gentleman's generous, uh, we'll call it patronage. <laughs> art, like, like what, paintings? It's more like private videos of an artistic <laughs> nature. That's what was in the hiding place. That's what it's for. <laughs> Guys, this all comes down to just a lover's spat. A lover's spat. Okay, <laughs> two consenting adults had a falling out. That happens. But the headline here is, it's all settled, hearts have mended, and Mr. Wormald will not be pressing charges. What was on these videos? They were videos intended to titillate the senses. <laughs> <laughs> squat cobbler. What's a squ squat cobbler? Squat cobbler. You know what squat cobbler is? No, I don't. I don't know what a squat cobbler no, is. No, me neither. What is it? Yeah, me neither. Don't know what, if I want to know. You two guys are cops. Hoboken squat cobbler. Full moon moon potty. Boston cream splat. <laughs> Dutch apple ass. Guys, am I not speaking English here? <laughs> what the hell is a squat cobbler? It's when a man sits in pie. He sits in a pie, and he, he wiggles around. <laughs> he Hellman's mayonnaise. It has a different name west of the Rockies. I don't know. But he, uh, technically, he does a crybaby squat, so there's tears, which makes it more specialized. Saul's making all this. Jimmy's making all this up, isn't he? Oh, and there, and there is a costume involved. <laughs> yeah, he's just making all this up. You've got to be shit. Yeah, like he would make it up. <laughs> it is a rich tapestry, my friends. And of course, this guy it's back there in the background is just odd enough that they'll believe it. So, uh, we're good, right? Yeah, great. <laughs> there is, however, one little tiny hanging Chad. <laughs> what, what Chad? You're going to have to make a video. <laughs> <laughs> The squat cobbler video. Wait, wait. So he eats the pies or just sits <laughs> in them? I'm both. If you gave me a million years, I still would not have come up with that. <laughs> and I noticed her sweatshirt, University of American Samoa. This definitely takes the cake. Kim. 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 Takes the pie. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think it was the video that clinched it. What video? Wait, wait. You you actually made a video? I, I gotta say, in the end, old Dan really committed. I believed the tears. I wasn't sure how many uh, takes we would need, so I overbought. But I uh, promise you. Untouched by human buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> you fabricated evidence? You used falsified evidence to exonerate a client. What if Davis and Maine find out you faked evidence? It wasn't a Davis and Maine client. It was some nothing little pro bono thing. Why would you risk the best job you've ever had for some... Pro bono case. Mm, she's Do not into it so friend. much anymore. Risking disbarment? That's, that's some friend. Fabricating evidence. Jimmy, this could really hurt you. They're never going to find out. Seriously? If you keep this up, they will find out. For what, Jimmy? Moral what flexibility. I cannot hear about this sort of thing ever again, okay? 
I mean it, Jimmy. Well, she doesn't want to risk her you won't. career. Well, that was episode two. I was hoping they were going to continue on with that guy's story. And maybe at this point now we're finished with it. And it looks like maybe this is going to be an ongoing sort of thing because we had the Kettleman's in the first season. And now we've got this guy. I don't remember his name or if they even told us his name with the baseball cards and the drugs and all of that. But that. Of course, the Kettleman's introduced Jimmy to Mike and Mike getting in, involved in that situation. And now this has introduced Mike to Nacho, which Nacho is associated with Tuco. And you get into the world of meth and, and Breaking Bad and all of that. So I can see there's a progression here that we're following where they're starting to slowly introduce these elements that we know at some point in the future they're going to get into. And it's just a matter of at what point do we really start to get deep down into it. And while we're going down that rabbit hole, we see the, the progression of Jimmy headed toward what we know he will become in Saul. And we saw it here where he had that moral flexibility and he fabricated the evidence with that video so we can see the progression of the storylines and the character development starting to build up here. And, of course, the development of Mike's character. Like I said during the episode, I'm really glad that they're focusing on Mike as much as they are. And I hope that continues throughout each season that we get a lot of Mike because, I, I, like I said, I really enjoyed his character in, in Breaking Bad. And when, when his character was gone, I was, I was a bit disappointed so I'm really glad to see them bringing him about and bringing him so deeply into the storylines here, so far at least. Now with Howard, like I said in the, in the beginning of the episode, Howard seemed like he, when he was talking to Chuck at the house, that like he was basically saying maybe this is what we should have done with Jimmy. Maybe we should have allowed Jimmy to come in and work with us. And of course Chuck was having no part of that. And maybe that's not what Howard was, was saying. That's just the impression that I got from his demeanor, the way he was saying things and, and the way he acted throughout that whole, that whole scenario uh, from helping Jimmy to, as much as he helped him with, I guess, with getting in with that other law firm and then speaking with Chuck about it here. And even so much as, as telling Kim, because he knew Kim's association with Saul, with Jimmy, he went so far as to tell Kim that it was Chuck that was keeping Jimmy from working at the at the firm. At least I'm assuming that that was what, what happened. They didn't show us that scene, but that was how Kim found out. So it seems like Howard's not quite the bad guy he was he was looking like he was going to be. And I would expect they're going to develop that character a bit more as we go along. So that was episode number two for season two. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you have any thoughts, please leave some comments down below. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And be sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload each video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on episode three.